sunny. All right, thanks, Erica. Well, with all this rain, yeah. it's really great movie weather. That's I'll see right. one after the show today. I'm going to see right. Interstellar. But okay. a preview that I've been loving, which you say is pretty good, is the Stephen Hawking movie. Right? Oh, yes, the Stephen Hawking movie people should definitely see. It's as part of my uh, Walls winner. It's called The Theory of Everything. Oh, the Absolutely previous, terrific. Yeah. Also, it brings you up. Uh, this is a man who's lived a long time. He's still alive. And the, I think that uh, Eddie Redmayne, who plays Stephen Hawking, is going to win the Oscar for Best Actor. Uh, there's a lot of good movies coming at us fa fast and furious because uh, it's Oscar time, Oscar uh, qualification time. Now, I admit it, I love movies about people who have actually lived based on lives of painters, writers, scientists, anchor women, uh, <laughs> unusual, unusual lawsuits. You know, I like anything that's real. Or in this case, super wealthy eccentrics. It's Foxcatcher, the story of John DuPont. Do you have any idea who I am? Some rich guy. A barely you. recognizable Steve Carell takes on troubled multi-gazillionaire DuPont. It took three hours in makeup every morning to get him like this, yet it was worth it. DuPont's family had forbidden wrestling when he was growing up, so it became a passion for young John. Director Bennett Miller, who gave us Capote and Moneyball, keeps us a bit distant from the real life and upbringing of DuPont. I like to learn about the real stuff yeah. that went on when these rich people were growing up. And that does hurt the film, but we still see a man struggling under his family name. They were the gunpowder family, the DuPonts, and struggling to gain respect. Channing Tatum and Mark Ruffalo fall under the DuPont dream, and you can almost feel like shouting at the screen, no, money isn't worth it, fame isn't worth it. Not a great movie, but a good one, and definitely should be seen, and good for Steve Carell for doing something yeah, that different. so different. I know, and I went, and you know, it's a true story, and so I went uh, and looked it up. I love doing that after I see a real movie. And a movie based on reality, and I'm telling you, this guy, he got it pretty right. It's very, it's very, it's good. It's not great, but it's good. Now, from Annie, get your gun. That's about you, isn't it, honey? <laughs> um, uh, okay. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> to Cat Baloo, to Calamity Jane, and the Quick and the Dead. Women in westerns have added color and excitement. Add the unusual raw-boned vitality of Hilary Swank as an independent frontiers woman, co-written and directed by her co-star Tommy Lee Jones, and you've got the Holmesman. Swank is a straight-talking single woman who lives uncommonly alone in the new Nebraska territories circa 1850. The loneliness, lack of medicine, and brutal weather drive three of her female neighbors into total madness. She drives these three severely sick women for help with a questionable claim jumper to help out, and that's Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, while Swank burrows deep inside her character, director and writer Jones never seems to let us knew, know who this unusual woman really is and why she makes baffling choices. It's a watchable movie. It gives you a different part of the West, but it's not a feminist Western. These women are not strong enough to be feminists. They all are victims. And uh, that, so that feminist Western still remains to be made, and maybe it will be in the future. Hilary Swank is terrific. Yeah, you know, she takes big her. chances. She's also, uh, here's some other movies to see right now. Definitely check out Birdman. Uh, it, it, Michael Keaton, I hope he's up for an Oscar for it. It's just brilliant. There's so many men, uh, men that will be up for Oscar this year. It's a very controversial category. St. Vincent, terrific. Everybody I know who's seen it is like this. That's the Bill Murray film. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, Naomi Watts, so funny in it, too. Theory of Everything, we were talking about Stephen mm -hmm. Hawking. Gone Girl, which is kind of like Vertigo a little bit. That's Not as good, of ben course. Affleck, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And it's just a weird, it's kind of perfect for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. You know how rainy days make you feel like black and white weirdness? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of good for that. It's not a great film, but it's all right, and you won't feel ripped off. And The Judge, definitely check out The Judge. That's uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Robert Duvall. Uh, all this good acting. It's too bad women aren't getting the roles the men are getting, uh, but that, uh, you know, that's just the way it goes these days. <laughs> to Be Takei is about George Takei. Wonderful. These are all movies you can download or get on DVD. Now, please, I really want you to get this, Annie. Mm -hmm. Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Oh, is this the BBC? It's a BBC, yes. You're, you're and it's about me. a woman in the 1920s. In Australia? In Australia. A wealthy woman in Melbourne, Australia, who loves to solve crimes. Okay. The clothes alone will knock you out. Is she on Netflix? Is it Gorgeous. On Netflix? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, good. So that definitely, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries, just great. The Railway Man, so 
good. Colin Firth, marvelous in that. Fading Gigolo, and finally, Belle. These are all movies to see right now. Now, let's talk about uh, a man that we lost this week who was beyond brilliant. This is the man who got, you know, he's an EGOT, right? He did, he got an Emmy, a Tony, an Oscar, and a Grammy. Uh, but more than that, he, I think he got 18 Tonys. <laughs> but he was really amazing. Um, his name is Mike Nichols, TV, stage, film director, writer, comedian. He began with the innovative comedy of Nichols and May. He went on to direct The Graduate, which is mm -hmm. an amazing direction, mm -hmm. really radical direction. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf was his first movie. Can you imagine telling Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton what to do on your <laughs> first movie, especially because they looked so unusual, those yeah. two, especially Taylor? Silkwood, Working Girl, The Birdcage, all of these movies, plus Angels in America, a uh, wonderful film that was made for television. And he also staged the original Odd Couple, Spam a Lot, many others. Absolutely great. His fourth wife was Diane Sawyer. Mm. And uh, they had a long marriage, uh, much longer than his other ones, anyway. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, you know, and he was just amazing. And he will be with us forever uh, because of his work. We're back with more after this break.